Hey guys, James Milney, E42. This is part two on how to install Polyglot. The first part, we got uh, Raspbian all installed, all ready to go, left it right here at this, this prompt. Uh, second part is actually installing Polyglot itself. Uh, should be fairly straightforward. Luckily, we have a nice little script that does everything for you. So if you go out to our GitHub, which I'll put in the comments below, and scroll down a little bit, the install script is right here, installation instructions. You shouldn't have to do anything below this if you run the install script. I will do another video on the manual process just so you guys can understand a little bit more of what and why. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just run the script. Again, it's just going to update our packages, make sure we have the latest and greatest from the Raspbian stuff from because there can be a quite a bit of a gap between when they release the version of Raspbian that we uh, that we installed or burned to our SD card, flashed to our SD card, uh, and when uh, we're actually doing the install. It can be several months. So we just want to make sure that we have all the latest and greatest packages, uh, which is the app get update, which is what we're doing now. Uh, then it's actually just going to install our prerequisites for us. Um, Polyglot was actually built on what's called the mean stack. It's kind of an enterprise level framework for software developers. Uh, it specifically stands for MongoDB uh, Express, which is a HTTP front end server. Um, Angular, which is a front end interface or a front end framework for uh, displaying HTML and CSS and all that fun stuff. And then uh, Node.js itself, which is the back end. It's basically JavaScript for servers kind of thing. Uh, we also need Git because that's how we actually store all of the Node servers uh, or actually reside on Git itself. So when you're at the Node server store and you install, it actually just clones the repo down to you. Uh, we felt this was kind of the easiest way to make sure you stay up to date. So we can always check and see what version's available or if there's any new commits available. And if there is, we'll throw an update button at you so you can just hit it and, and pull the latest version. So the developers can keep you up to date and we can have a very short development cycle. Uh, this usually helps you know release new features faster uh, than if we tried to make you download a zip file or something on every time every time there was an update or something like that. So we've tried to make it as easy and seamless as possible to get updates, uh, even to Polyglot itself. Polyglot itself should show you a nice update button uh, that you can just download and will automatically download the new version for you and restart. So a lot of good stuff there. Um, another thing to remember is there are different types of architectures. So Raspberry Pis themselves are what's called the ARM architecture. Uh, which is a different kind of chip than, say, Intel, uh, which most people are familiar with. Uh, so there are different versions of Polyglot that run on those different architectures, um, even different operating systems like Mac versus Linux. So we may be running Debian or, or Raspbian on the Linux platform, but we're obviously running OS X on the Mac platform. So uh, there are different versions out there. This script should do everything for you on any of them. But if you do run into a problem anywhere, just please let me know. Uh, I know some people have had some issues with sudo uh, not being installed on their thing. I will actually do another video on that just to make sure that everybody gets, um, that we address that issue as well. But as you can see, the script is kind of running along by itself, running, uh, grabbing everything. All the previous, we install Python 2, we, we install Python 3. Um, because some of the node servers are written in Python 2, some are written in Python 3. Um, we like to give the developers an option on what platform they want to write in um, because we don't want to restrict uh, anybody that wants to help the community, right? So uh, as you can see here, it looks like it got all the way through. Uh, it did install MongoDB for us. All the Pythons uh, created a polyglot directory for us told us what our CPU type is, like we were discussing. This is an ARM CPU. Got the right version. Uh, extracted as force. Went ahead and created the, the startup script um, to automatically run on startup. And then it says it's finally got there for us. This is the IP address of this particular Raspberry Pi. Uh, a couple of things I'll look at first just to do some verification. So if we do sudo system control status polyglot v v2 we should see 
that Polyglot is active and running. That's good. That means everything's done. It means Polyglot itself is up and ready to go. Uh, it does take a couple of minutes. Uh, it generates some SSH TLS keys at the very beginning. So it takes a couple of minutes, especially on some of the older Raspberry Pis. It could take two to three minutes for that to finally come up. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and grab, grab that. And actually, I think I already have one open here. And you'll notice at the very beginning, uh, we chose to use secure by default. And I understand that, that some people may say that um, self-signed keys is not secure. Um, they are semi-correct, uh, but at least the traffic is encrypted between front and back end. Uh, we do give you the option to go HTTP only um, and get rid of the HTTPS, but that's not default. Uh, so we'll address that in another video. Again, it says it's our connection is not private. Again, you need to make sure you're using HTTPS. It's a big question on the forums, HTTPS. Okay, then we'll go advanced. We'll go ahead and proceed. And you'll notice we finally get the login page for Polyglot itself. We'll go ahead and end the video here. Uh, stay tuned for the next video on version three. We'll actually go through setup on the ISY in video three and uh, how to install a couple of node servers. We'll catch you then.